No, keep it. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's right. down the road, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, yeah. we appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, you guys are out of Toll House? Yeah. Cool. I jumped away from the video to catch you up a bit. It's Friday morning. About five hours I'm going to leave to go to Folsom so I can do the bike fest. So the night before the Fetching Mrs. Cycling Week and I went out to eat and it was a good meal and I got home and then I realized that there wasn't enough protein in it for me. So I need to take 40 grams, 50 grams preferably before I, you know, before I go to sleep. So I needed to take some more protein so I made this protein concoction which is basically a bunch of whey protein in this uh, muesli and almond milk. You know, it tasted good, but then it just kind of settled in there. So then I went to bed like that. Okay, fine. Get up in the morning, get up early in the morning. I uh, was excited about going to the, uh, you know, to the bike fest. And um, I make my morning protein concoction, again, about 40 to 50 grams, because you got to get that mTORC one to, uh, you know, to move and to do its job. I'm drinking this uh, smoothie, and it's just not settling in because I'm still feeling the, uh, the effects of what I ate last night or then the night before. I'm doing my calisthenics and then this one particular move, my stomach gets kind of crunched, you know, again, not feeling great, and it hits my vagus nerve and I go into AFib. And so I'm thinking, damn, that puts my uh, bike fit in danger and it puts my ride that I'm doing the next day with a friend of mine who uh, we haven't ridden together for months. Uh, she's been getting ready for this gravel event, and I don't do a lot of gravel riding. The stress fracture thing I've been dealing with, and now the Achilles thing, which this vlog is based on. I take 300 milligrams of flecainide, and I also take some Eliquis in case the flecainide doesn't work. So the flecainide is a sodium channel blocker, and it's just supposed to just stop the system, so to speak, or slow it down tremendously, and then you go back into sinus. And it usually happens within two hours. Well, after two hours, it still wasn't happening. Uh, so then I'm just... I'm waiting around. You can't take any more because, you know, 300 milligrams is getting quite a bit. So eventually it starts to work, and at about four hours, I'm back in the sinus. So the, the AFib that I had was uh, not that standard AFib pattern that I usually get. It was uh, more of an accelerated heart rate. I was clocking at about 80 beats per minute, and which doesn't seem much for, you know, normal people that don't exercise out there, but my heart rate, resting heart rate's around 40, 41, and it's in about 45 minutes. I'm supposed to take off, which I eventually do for the bike fit. And that's episode three, and it's also linked in the description below. So now you're caught up. So now we're going to go back to the video, and I'm going to be talking about my Achilles heel and how we reacted during that ride. Hey, cycling community, this is Steve Grusis of Cycling Greek. Today is going to be my final test ride. I had my first test ride on episode two, and that showed me that the problem was probably inflammation that was causing my uh, Achilles to, to have the pain that it was having. This ride was scheduled to be a 40 mile ride, but I wanted to do more, and then because of where I live, I get to ride 10 miles to the start, and of course 10 miles back, so 60 miles for me. This was pretty much the perfect test ride for me. I was with a group that had stronger people than me, and I was on a course that had 3,000 feet of climbing in it, in which 2,500 feet was in a 15-mile segment. I also didn't just ride wheels. Any endurance I was doing to get to the ride, and on the way back, was true endurance. I also took the opportunity to enhance my pace over a number of sections, including trying to stay up with these spider monkeys going up this 15% wall. <laughs> yep! I told them you need to slow down, because I kept hearing voices dwindle. You're not breathing hard, Steve. That's a good sign. Come up here and hear it. <laughs> oh. I cannot stand Steve's breathing, really. It drives me absolutely insane when he's right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> breathing in my ear, doing it on purpose. I'm breathing hard. Me too. Yeah. This is Steve Hill. Now, some of you out there may be thinking, why are you doing a ride like this? You did a bike fit yesterday, you got your cleats moved back, you got your seat lowered by uh, 11 millimeters, you got it pushed forward by 16 millimeters, and you had some other changes. True. What I should be doing is for the next week or so, just taking easy rides and taking smaller rides. But that's not what I did. As it turned out, on the way home after I left everyone else and was doing my last 10 miles, 
I felt a little something in my left hamstring, but it wasn't much, and it went away. It never bothered me again. What also didn't bother me was my Achilles. Looks like the theory of the remaining inflammation from the stress fracture was the culprit. So now my decision is to cancel that ortho appointment. This ride took place on a Saturday. On Sunday, I had my first training ride in quite a while. The previous four to five weeks, I was basically just working on limiting my losses. I didn't have much time to ride on Sunday, so I rode for about an hour or 50 minutes. 30 minutes was endurance, 42 minutes was tempo, and about nine minutes I was in threshold. And then I had some uh, VO2 max and neuromuscular work as well, a few minutes of that. It felt great to be training again. So, my first race in two months. I hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the entire series, because this is the last one. As always, remember, comment, like, subscribe, The Cycling Greek.